Welcome to the Military Money Manual Podcast. I'm your host, Spencer, the founder of MilitaryMoneyManual.com. I started my website in 2012 to share everything I've learned about military travel hacking, investing, and financial independence. Together with my co-host, Jamie, we want to help military service members just like you and your family achieve financial independence as soon as possible. Jamie and I are both active duty Air Force officers with over 25 years of military personal finance experience. Thanks for tuning in to the Military Money Manual Podcast. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Military Money Manual Podcast. I'm Spencer, and today we're going to talk about the foundations of personal finance and financial independence that cadets and midshipmen can start with while they're in college. I received a couple emails recently uh, from a freshman at the United States Air Force Academy and an ROTC cadet from a university in Florida, and I'll let Jamie read both of those. Yeah, so I think it's great that uh, we have people of all stages, you know, listening and sending in questions and trying to get a little bit better at their personal finance journey. But the first one, uh, like you mentioned, from the uh, cadet at the Air Force Academy, Spencer, I've been reading your blog for a while now. I turned 18 in less than two weeks. I was wondering what my first step should be when I get my uh, should be to get my finances right. I was thinking about getting a credit card to start building up credit as well as starting an HYSA for an emergency fund. I already have a Roth IRA set up with automatic investment every two weeks. After looking at your blog, I've researched the MX Blue Cash Preferred, Chase Freedom Flex, and the Chase Freedom Unlimited card. I'm just not sure which one to get once I turn 18. Do you have any guidance for what to do and what card I should get? Uh, and then the second question is from Ar- Army RTC Cadet in a university in Florida. And he says, I'll be commissioning as officer in about four years. Uh, please off- offer any advice. So um, what do you think? Yeah, well, first of all, um, like Jamie said, it's awesome to get emails from people at all stages on their journey to financial independence. Um, I certainly didn't know anything about FI when I was 18 years old, or I guess Hudson's 17, uh, which is crazy. Um, and happy birthday if uh, if this is coming out around your uh, this episode is coming out around your birthday. Um, but yeah, I think it's awesome that they're. Um, you know, both the the freshmen and Army ROTC and uh, at the University in Florida and the USAFA, they're both thinking about setting themselves up for financial success while they're still in college. Um, first, I would say, you know, while you're in ROTC and or while you're at one of the service academies, it's not guaranteed that you're going to graduate. So it's really important to know what, what you're going through, uh, the, the training that you're going through and the courses that you're taking, they're difficult. So, you know, don't get too distracted by saving and investing for financial independence and let what's important slip to the wayside. Jamie, um, you know, where would you want to start with this? I, I think, you know, he Hudson jumps right into which credit card should open first, but I think there's a lot of other financial foundation, financial building blocks that, you know, everybody in uh, college or just coming out of high school should really focus on first before they start thinking about credit cards. Yeah, absolutely. I, um, I think education and enhancing your understanding of personal finance is very important. Uh, but before we get into that in a second, I'll just, we'll give you some practical steps of some things you can do. And in fact, Spencer's got a really good our article on the website called the personal finance flow chart for active duty military. And so you can pick up some of that. Some of that may not be applicable quite yet for, for a, um, for a college student. But the first thing that I would recommend is set up, setting up a free checking and savings account at a military friendly bank like USA or Navy federal. If you don't already have that, a lot of cadets already do. They, they invest a lot of marketing dollars into the service academies and ROTC. Um, and once you have that set up, start with an emergency fund. Um, when an emergency fund is in place, things like an emergency trip home, if one of your, got, you know, God forbid someone gets sick in your family or, or you have to make a trip home for some other emergency or you need some kind of car repair, which I don't think you can have a car as a freshman. So, but whatever your emergency might be, uh, you have some background there. So those are kind of the first two things I would say in a practical side, checking and savings account um, at a good bank that doesn't charge you fees every month, no minimum swipe per, you know, transactions per month no um, minimum balance fees, no monthly maintenance fees or anything like that. That's why USA and Navy Federal are easy ones. Um, And then set up an emergency fund. Um, 
when we talk about emergency funds, a lot of times you and I both recommend starting with a thousand dollar emergency fund. Do you think Spencer, that that's still appropriate for a college student or would you give them a little bit different target for a, to start out with? I would say the thousand dollars is a good goal to shoot for, but you know, I'm not sure what a cadet paycheck looks like these days. I think when I was an RTC cadet, I mean, as a freshman and software, I don't think we were making much more than like two fifty a month. Yeah. Um, it wasn't much. And yeah, now that was 10 years ago. And I think they got paid a little bit better at um, the service academies, but I'm not sure. I will we'll have to do some research and look up what the exact dollar amount is there. Um, $500, you know, initially is a, is a, is a great goal. And you might be able to hit that in just a month or two. And then, um, but you're not really going to have that many expenses. Usually as a freshman, you'll be so busy with your courses and uh, all the other training and athletics and stuff that you're doing. So I would say $500 uh, to start with, you know, right off the get go, you should be able to hit that probably within a month or two and then bump it up to a thousand dollars. And then, you know, the, the traditional advice is, you know, three months of pay uh, or three months of expenses, three to six months for a college student, for an ROTC or uh, academy cadet or midshipman, that, that might not be completely relevant. You know, as long as you do your coursework, stay in school, I mean, you're going to keep getting your, um, your paycheck. Uh, but, you know, maybe, yeah, maybe a thousand dollars initially and then two or three thousand dollars, you know, to, as a, um, as like a one or two year goal so that you're coming out of the, um, you're coming out of the academy, you know, with a with a little bit of savings. So you saw for cadets, this is a lot more than I expected. They earn approximately $1,185 per month in basic pay, uh, just on usafa.edu. So that's pretty decent, almost $1,200 a month. Um, and if you're RTC scholar or cadet, you might have some more expenses, um, like you might rent an apartment off base. So keep that in mind. Everyone's situation is going to be a little bit different. But like Spencer mentioned earlier, the graduation is not guaranteed. So if you're banking on a big paycheck in a year or four years, you, d- you don't want to be behind just because you're expecting to commission in a few years. And if you're a cadet, you definitely should have a very good financial start in your adult life um, coming off of the academy, uh, any service academy um, or uh, RTC scholarship, ideally. Um, One thing that you mentioned um, was, or actually in the article, sorry, in the letter that he sent us was a HYSA. So that's a high yield savings account. Um, there's, you know, lots of options out there, whether it's, uh, I think American Express has one, uh, Marcus, I think from Goldman Sachs uh, has one. There's, you know, there's always Ally Bank, um, I think used to offer one. There's so many out there. Um, really, you can just go to any search engine and type in high yield savings account, and you'll be bombarded, you know, with 10 ads. And there's tons of websites out there that compare the highest interest rates that you can receive on those accounts. Um, right now in the low interest rate environment that we're in, in 2021, 2022, you're not going to get that much, maybe one, one and a half percent. Um, and you know, 10 years ago, you, there were high yield savings accounts where you could get three, four or 5%. So it just depends on, you know, what interest rates are doing. And that's something that's, you know, completely out of your control. So I would say it doesn't right now in the current low interest rate environment, um, if you want to use a high, a high yield savings account, that's fine. But really, I would focus on you have your cash, you have your um, you know emergency fund, day to day expenses, your checking accounts, and then some savings set aside. And it doesn't really matter if it's in a point one percent or one percent account. I mean, over you know over a year, the difference is going to be if you have you know ten thousand dollars in there, the difference is going to be a hundred dollars or ten dollars, right? Like you're not probably not going to notice that over uh, over a year's time um but if it helps you psychologically you know to separate the money out into a separate account then go for it i don't think it's there's really no harm there yeah absolutely keep the keep it in focus that at this time of low expenses in your life it's an opportunity to to get ahead or be very close to zero when you graduate and not start out behind so don't let uh overspending or um, things like that when you're, in, especially as your income is lower and you're focused on graduation and education, cause that's such an important thing. Just make sure you're setting a good foundation for, for life with that. Yeah. So one thing that you mentioned, um, right before you got into like the practical advice of the savings accounts is you talked about 
uh, education and expanding your your learning. So are there any books that you'd recommend for uh, a freshman or even a senior um, coming out of the academy? I'll recommend, I'll plug one just before we get started. And that's- No, I don't, um, I don't know any good books out there about yeah, money right now. No, yeah. None of them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll, I'll just mention one before, uh, before I let you run down the list. And that's the Military Money Manual, A Practical Guide to Financial Freedom. So this is the book that I wrote because when I joined the military in 2010, there really weren't any good guides to achieving financial independence in the military. So after you know writing my blog for ten years and doing really you know years and years of research, reading, writing, um, I consolidated everything that I learned about achieving financial independence into this book. So it's available right now, militarymoneymanual.com/book, and it's uh, available in audiobook an ebook and a beautiful hardcover that's printed right here in the good old United States of America. And you can use promo code podcast and get a special discount on the book. And that's militarymoneymanual.com slash book. And I'm really excited about this book. I've been working on it with my editor for over two years. Um, I think it turned out really nicely. And that's um, that would be my number one book recommendation for a uh, someone at one of the service academies in ROTC. But Jamie, do you have any, besides the military money manual, do you have any other book recommendations? Absolutely. I, I, I will say, having read your book a couple times already, I, I do think it is a very good book and is, a, is something, um, like you say, that every, it's the stuff that every new person in the military should know. And there's a lot of stuff that uh, people who aren't new should know as well. But some other good ones, um, I'll just kind of run through a, a few good ones that you can add to your Audible account, uh, take advantage of that Amex Platinum credit or something. But I Will Teach You to Be Rich is is a good one. The Millionaire Next Door, uh, Simple Path to Wealth, The Little Book of Common Sense Investing. And really all of those, you might not agree with everything that's in there, but you can take a little bit from each person's uh, theories, concepts, and the way that they present their plan to form what you think is your um, financial independence kind of mindset um, and your personal finance philosophy. Yeah, the um, the other book that actually really helped me, um, which you know is it pains me to say, but was Dave Ramsey's uh, Total Money Makeover. Um, I read that when I had sixty thousand dollars in student loans. Um, I was right out of. Um, just graduated at Air Force ROTC. I was about a year and a half down my training pipeline to my first duty assignment, and you know it. That book, um, a lot of the concepts in that book, I applied to my life, and it and it did help me, um, you know, use the debt snowball and get out of debt um, much, you know, much much more quickly than a lot of my peers. You know, I still I talk to a lot of people who have been in the military for uh, ten years and they're still paying off their student loans. So it's um, it's very liberating when you when you do pay off those uh, that debt and you finally get back to zero and you can start working on you know building your savings, building your investments, and uh, and starting uh, the the journey to financial independence even quicker than than you would otherwise. Right, absolutely. I would definitely agree with the total money makeover. Is if if you are in debt, which likely a lot of cadets or midshipmen hopefully are not at this point. Uh, but if you are the mil the total money makeover is going to be crucial to advancing your freedom. One other one that we've talked about before is the Psy psychology of money. And we both really enjoy that book. Uh, would that fit well for a freshman in college? What do you think? I think if you're going to read one book and only one book, Psychology of Money is probably that book. After, of course, after you read the Military Money Manual, but um, <laughs> the just had to get that one in there. Shameless but, plug. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, but I do think that the the Psychology of Money to me it it's one of the you know it's broken down into twenty kind of individual sections that you can you can read independently of each other. Um, but what I noticed when I was reading Psychology of Money is that. Morgan Housel, the author, really summarized all these other books that we've mentioned, and it was, it's an, it really is a, a one stop shop. But if you want the, if you want the data, if you want the the numbers, then you have to go read the other books because um, he kind of approaches everything at a high level, and you know it's great, it's all good advice. I agree with just, you know, I wish I'd written the book. Um, it's it really is fantastic the uh, the psychology of money, but I. I think that 
if you're if you're going to do a deep dive, um, that's a great place to start. Psychology of Money, and then go and read all the other books um, that that we've mentioned, and that will give you you know because sometimes you have to hear something three, four, five, even seven times before you finally get it, and you know people will connect with uh, one style of writing, and then some people will connect with another style of writing. Right. So um, yeah, it's definitely um, it's definitely one of my top recommended books, and you know, I, everybody from my 85 year old, uh, grandfather, uh, all the way down to my 20 year old, um, I'm oh, sorry, he's 20, how was he? 28 year old, uh, younger brother. <laughs> um, sorry, Dale. And, uh, and, uh, it's, yeah, I think it's, um, I think it's a, a fantastic book and just about no matter where you are in your financial journey, I think it will remind you of some fundamentals and uh, maybe point out some of the areas where, where you might need to improve. So, uh, Jamie, one question that comes up a lot with, from cadets and midshipmen is, should you start a Roth IRA in college? What are your thoughts on that? For most people, yes. If you have earned income and you're not trying to dig yourself out of a huge hole of debt. Um, and you have that surplus money, then absolutely you should. Uh, so for most people in, uh, especially a service academy, should be in a position where they're getting a little bit of money in and they should be able to probably even max it out each year. If you're making almost $1,200 a month, 6000 a year should definitely be doable. And that's really nice because we all know time in the market and the earlier you start investing is what really is the most beneficial for long-term growth and financial independence. So I, I would say yes. I think if you have an income and you can spare the money, um, that's a really good way to start your journey towards financial independence. I think you also, I know for myself, when I opened up my Roth IRA, I actually opened up mine in high school because I had to earn income from, um, from summer jobs. And my dad, um, you know, was a big finance guy and he, he was like, you got to open a Roth IRA. You got to start, start early. And it, it just it allows you to make a lot of, especially if you do it in high school or college, you can make a lot of the investment mistakes um, early and learn from them. So I know for myself, like I tried chasing performance, I tried day trading, I tried um, <laughs> options. You know, I tried it, and I was in, I was eighteen years old and I was in high school, right? Like I should never have been approved for any of these things, but uh, <laughs> whatever. It was you know it was early two thousands. There weren't a whole lot of the two thousand eight financial crisis hadn't happened yet. Um, so the laws were a little bit looser, but I, you know, you, you make, you can make a, a lot of these mistakes that some people don't make until they're in their thirties, forties, or fifties. And, and you can learn those lessons early and then, you know, come to the realization that, um, you know, uh, unfortunately some people will learn the wrong lessons and they'll find themselves, you know, actually very successful at, uh, picking stocks. <laughs> oh, so, and that's great. You know, if that's, if that's, if that's your forte, then, then go for it. But I learned very quickly that index fund investing was the way for me. And, uh, and you know, that was something that I learned early and I carried those lessons, you know, for the rest of my investing life. So that really opening a, a Roth IRA in, um, for my, for myself in, in high school was, was very beneficial. And I would highly recommend ROTC cadets to, to open it. Now you're not getting paid as much as the uh, Academy cadets, but, uh, your life is probably your life quality of life is probably a little bit better. So I would, um, I would still recommend, you know, opening one up, especially if you have like, um, if you work while you're in, um, while you're in college or over the summer. And then right. two things I'll mention about the, the Roth IRA is you can always pull out your contributions. So that's a, you know, you can't put them back in. Um, so you have to be careful with that, but you can always pull out your contributions. So that if you do need that money, it's available to you. And then the other thing that I'll mention is that you can pull out $10,000 for a first home purchase, and that can come from contributions or the earnings. So I did that when we bought our first um, condo, uh, uh, my first duty station. And that really, I mean, the down payment was $16,000 and we were able to pull $10,000 on my Roth IRA because of that money. And the rest of the money was from uh, my wife working and with her savings and my ten thousand dollars, we were able to uh, to buy that that condo, and you know, we we made money on that. So that was a good financial de decision for us at the time. Um, but you know, opening that Roth IRA when I was when I was very young allowed us to have that that capital. Yeah, one other thing we haven't mentioned yet that I have to throw out there, just based on my personality and and uh, view of 
uh, personal finance right now is budgeting. You can start building good habits as a cadet, even if the dollar amount is smaller. Um, you can still be intentional with your money and say, I want every dollar of my pay to go towards this pur- purchase versus just being reactive and letting life kind of happen to you at the end of the pay period. You're like, where did all that money go? Where'd my $1,100 go from my cadet pay this month? Uh, so you can build a lot of good financial principles and habits now at a lower risk period, like Spencer mentioned, with the investing stuff, like it's okay if you if you misallocate some of your budget. There's there's lower risk of doing it now than when you're 21 or when you're 41. So start now, build some of those good principles and habits. Yeah, I think exactly what you said, Jamie. The you know if you uh, what's that saying? Like if you can't be trusted with a thousand dollars, like how can someone trust you with a hundred thousand yeah. dollars? Um, so like as you you know, when you have such little income, um, the stakes are actually higher, right? Like you, you, when you need a budget is when you're not making any money or you're making yeah, very true. little money. Um, and as you're, as you build those, those good habits of not overspending, as you make more money, um, I know for myself personally, like I've just, we, my, my wife and I, we, we check what we spend, um, every month, but we, we really don't budget anymore. And, um, that's, you know, but we built, it's because like we've built the habits where, you know, we know approximately how much we spend on going out to eat and we know how much we spend on groceries and we pretty much don't deviate from that. Um, those habits that we built years ago. And that was because we were very strict budgeters when we first got married. So I would um, argue that you have to, you have to have the foundation of doing it. So you can't look at, you know, if your net worth is, is, uh, zero or negative, you can't look at someone whose net worth is 500,000 or several million and be like, well, they're not budgeting. It's, you have to start you have yeah. to start with a little bit of discipline and then over time that discipline will lead to growth which allows you to take off the reins a little bit and and experiment a little bit more with other techniques. Yeah. Uh, that's obviously I'm I'm I, I I enjoy it too. We've talked about that several times, but yeah. um, going back to the question Spencer, he mentioned some credit cards that he was looking at. Um, do you have some first credit cards you'd recommend? And at what point is the right time to start looking at that? Is is freshman year a good time to start with maybe the first one? I, I don't I don't see a problem with freshman year. You know, you turn 18 years old and um and you pick up a credit card. If you have no uh prior, you know, debt, um that's a first of all, that's a great place to be in. Um, but you might not really have a credit score established. Um so I think the one of the easiest ways to to pick up a a good credit card is go through those military friendly banks that we we mentioned so pen uh, pentagon federal pen fed usa yeah, or uh, or navy federal and uh, nfcu navy federal credit union and look at the uh, the cards that they offer because a lot of times they'll pre-qualify you just for being a member um so you can you know or or they also offer um where they call them uh, secured cards. So you put, you know, $500 into an account and then they give you they issue you the card with a $500 limit backed by the $500 cash that you have in there and, you know, just put your um, you know, some gas if you're um if you're a uh, if you're a ROTC cadet or if you're a um, midshipman or a or a cadet at one of the service academies, you know whatever expenses you have just put it on the card and then pay it off immediately and after six months, you'll have established a credit score and it'll probably be pretty good. Probably be in the, you know, mid 700s because, um, you know, Navy Federal or USAA gave you this card. You showed that you could be responsible with it and paid on time. The other thing to do is right away set up auto pay. Yeah. Always, always, always set up auto pay. So that way, if you get busy, you're out on a t- uh, training or, you know, you just get, you know, you miss the email that says, hey, you know, your statement's posted the auto pay will catch it and it'll take the money right out of your checking account. And you won't be putting too much on it, you know, maybe $20 here, a hundred dollars there and just pay it off and, and do that for a year or even two years. And, um, or even your entire college experience, what you really want to look for is a no annual fee card. Um, because this is going to be, this is going to start, uh, establishing your, your credit history. And, when you do graduate and you become eligible for the Military Lending Act or uh, Service Member Civil Relief Act (MLA) or SCRA benefits on the you know premium credit cards like the MX Platinum or the Chase Sapphire Reserve, and they're going to waive you know those giant six hundred ninety five or five hundred fifty dollar annual fees for you, 
you've, you know, they want to see th- those cards aren't available if you have a, a bad credit score. So they're going to want, they're going to want to see that you have a good credit score. And especially with Chase, you're going to need to establish some kind of relationship with them before you're probably going to be approved for the Chase Sapphire uh, reserve or preferred. So um, again, a no annual fee card once you graduate or as you get close to graduating, like the um, Chase Freedom Unlimited or the Chase Freedom Flex, something like that. That's going to be a great place to, again, um, show that you can be responsible with credit, establish that relationship with the bank. And then, you know, within a couple of months, you're going to be eligible um, to to open up those annual fee waived cards. You don't want to open up those annual fee waived cards while you're in the um, at the service academies or in ROTC because, A, you're not in the MLI database, so your fees aren't going to be waived. And B, you probably don't have that much, uh, that high of expenses. And it's going to be, it might be difficult for you to meet the minimum spend. And you might not have that much free time either to enjoy the travel benefits. So right. I would say patience is a virtue here. Open up that no annual fee card from um, a military friendly bank. If it has to be a secure card, that's no problem. Just, you know, as long as it's no annual fee and um, you can, because then you can keep it open forever. So now I, I had a no annual fee card from, I think it was from college and you know, it's, it's a 15 year card now. So my credit history goes back 15 years and I put a couple dollars on the card every year just to keep the, the credit line open. And then I pay it off immediately and you know, it ages all my, so I can open up more cards now and I have this, um, 15 year card that is aging all of my credit. Nice. Um, and it's okay if your first card has a lower line of credit if they only approve you for 500 or 1000 or 1500 maybe is probably the max that I would expect for cadet and probably 500 is where where they're going to come in for your first card and that's okay all like spencer said all it is, is about establishing that you can be responsible with it pay it off on time and it's also a nice little built-in protection to keep you from getting out of control if you uh forget and and you're not disciplined one one day um Spencer, what about the USA or uh, career starter loan or, or the Navy uh, federal career kickoff loan? We did an episode, a whole episode on that. So if you guys haven't listened to that, um, do you remember what episode number it was? I don't remember what episode number I'll look it up it was, while you're talking, but, but what do you think? Okay. What do you think about that? <laughs> number nine, episode um, nine. There you go. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're the kind of person who's asking these questions freshman year, um, like, you know, how do I set myself up for uh, financial freedom, financial success? then, I mean, you can go two ways with this, right? You could not take out the loan because you don't need it. You're going to have savings when you graduate. You'll be able to cover your own expenses and you, you know, you're going to be able to buy a car because you were saving all four years because you know that when you graduate, you're going to need a either reliable used car or a, you know, a cheap new car. But on the other hand, um, you know, after reading all of these books, you might recognize that Hey, they're offering me a lot of money at a low interest rate. And if I'm smart about it, I can take that money and invest it. And still, you know, as long as I'm getting that guaranteed government paycheck for my military service, I can make my payments on that loan and I can get that money working for me earlier. So, you know, there's two paths you can take here. I would say, um, you know, the more aggressive ones are definitely going to want to naturally um, go towards using leverage, using the USA Career Starter Loan or the Navy Federal Career Kickoff Loan as an investment tool. But for the, um, you know, for some, for a lot of people, it's, it, it's a good, it's a good strategy just to never go into debt for, you know, for any reason, if you can avoid it. So that's kind of my, my thoughts on the, uh, on the Career Star Loans. Any, you got anything on that, Jamie? Um, I think, uh, no, you, you pretty much hit it all. If you're going to take it off, if, if you are going to take it out, make sure you have a plan for it and you're not just taking it, just to have a stack of cash that you're going to blow through. Um, that's really the, the, the yeah. theme of, of that for me. Yep. Um, so and t- another question that often comes up and it wasn't asked by, um, by this cadet, but I, I've received it in other, um, emails is how do I like, how do I start investing? Like, what would you recommend as, as an investment strategy? You know, I've got this Roth IRA I'm putting a little bit of money into it or or from at the service Academy, maybe I'm maxing it out. Um, you know, every, every year, is there any, um, any thoughts, Jamie on like where they would start building their investment strategy? There's, well, 
Of course, I have thoughts on it. That's kind of a trap question. Yeah, but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the the Bogleheads Guide to Investing is a very long book that I uh, recently did again through audiobook. Uh, but if you if you look up, there's a whole bunch of forums and stuff, and basically that follows the the founder of Vanguard. Spencer and I both are big fans of of index funds um, and simple investment. And it, it kind of follows that strategy. So I would definitely recommend starting there and not overwhelming yourself with too many options because there's a lot of funds, a lot of banks, a lot of things to research, fee structures and front load or not, and how the how the funds um, turn over. And there's so many different variables that it's a very simple one. Unless you're a finance nerd and really want to get in the weeds, uh, the Bogleheads guide to investing and kind of that strategy you can find on their forums is really one I would recommend big time. Yeah. They have their three, their, their lazy portfolios or three fund portfolio. And it's just made up of a U.S. stock market index fund, an international stock market index fund and a U.S. bond fund. And that's still, you know, I implemented that investing strategy when I was in college and that's still what I do today. Um, and it's worked out great. Now, granted, we've been riding, you know, two of uh, the longest bull markets in history, but um, you know, it's, it's definitely a, it's a simple strategy. It's very low cost and I don't have to think about it. And I can, I can, you know, focus on other things like, um, increasing my savings rate or, you know, the, the stuff that's in my control. I don't have to worry about how my investments are performing. So yeah, I would recommend, uh, just Google, uh, Bogleheads, um, three fund, uh, portfolio is a good place to start. And I think that will get, at least, Again, you're in college or you're at the academy. You probably have a little bit of free time. Now is the time to do your research and figure out what kind of strategy, what kind of investor you want to be. Um, I, I definitely recommend the the passive index investing strategy. But um, you know, I know a lot of guys who are in some crazy stuff like crypto and options and, you know, just all Tesla calls and they're doing okay. But you know, that's, I like to, I, I couldn't do it. It's that doesn't fit my personality. I can't sleep well at night. Um, knowing that essentially I'm gambling with my retirement savings. Um, so that's, uh, that's what I recommend for the, for the investment strategy portion. Um, and then finally, Jamie, um, or a couple, couple other questions. Sorry, we got here. Um, buying a home at your first duty station. Thoughts on that? Um, I personally am not going to recommend that in almost all cases. Um, personal opinion, a little bit heavy here. I think in the military, buying a home is a you have to be very, very careful with it because you your first duty station might be a, a, a longer training uh, period or you don't really know how to be an adult yet, how to handle income and buying a home is a big commitment. You probably, most people probably don't have a significant down payment to help contribute to that. And what we're finding right now is as housing prices have gone up recently, is there's a lot of military people who are stuck in homes that they can't get rid of. Or what we saw a decade ago, um, 2008, 2009 is a ton of military people having to move away and end up short selling or foreclosing on their house because they weren't expecting right. orders or they were expecting orders, but weren't expecting the cost of their, the price of their home to go down so much. So there, there's definitely some people who are very good at owning a home and picking out the right home that they can either rent out and, and excel in as a long distance landlord. Um, there's some people who can just have a knack for fixing it up themselves a little bit so they, they can likely get value out of it on the other side. But for most people, I would not recommend starting there because it is such a big investment that you're probably not well set up for, for most people in the military. You have no control over when you're going to move, when you're going to get reassigned, if your training is going to go well. And there's just too many variables, especially early in the military, where um, moving every two to four years, you have to be very, very careful before you buy a house. Um, you know, we've been in 12 and a half years and bought one house and it worked out well for us, but a lot of it I think is just luck sometimes too. Yeah. So much of real estate investing, um, especially if you're buying a place to live in yourself and you're not thinking about what is my strategy? What is my plan when I PCS? Um, then you're really, you, you could be gambling. Um, and I know for 
same thing. We bought one condo at our first duty station and we got lucky. We made money on it, but it could have gone the other way. And so I, I really caution people, especially first duty station, um, you know, get there, get settled, you know, make sure that your, your, your pay is, is coming in. like it should make sure that, you know, um, understand like what your job is, you know, cause some jobs you show up and you're working from nine to two and you have every other Friday off. And then some jobs you show up and you're working from, you know, seven in the morning to seven at night. And you have to come in on Sunday sometimes. So or your it's TDY just, ton. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You're not, you're not around. And you know, maybe you bought a fixer upper because you know, you're the handyman, but your spouse isn't. And now they're living in a cold leaky house and they're trying to, um, you know, raise, raise your kids while you're away on TDY. And that can put a lot of stress and strain on your relationship. So it's always, um, I think it's always more important to, especially early in your military career, give yourself flexibility, just rent either on base or off base and, uh, start, start with that. And then, um, you know, again, do the education, do the research. And if you're the type of person that wants to be a landlord or, or wants to, um, you know, buy houses and fix them up and flip them, go for it. You know, I know tons of people, you know, go check out the bigger pockets, um, podcast and, and website, lots of military people. Uh, the other one is, uh, from, uh, from military rich, to millionaire. Rich. Uh, oh, and rich on money. Uh, yeah. da- um, that's David Perret is, uh, from military to millionaire. And then rich Carey is uh, rich on money. I mean, rich on money. He, he, rich Carey, he bought 20 homes in the, um, Alabama. Um, uh, where, where was he? Not the M- Montgomery. Was- Montgomery area. Yeah. And, um, he did it while he was overseas in Japan and Korea. So it's, yeah, uh, which is, to me sounds incredibly stressful, but some does. people, yeah, some exactly. people like it. Yeah. Yep. Some people, um, some people can do it. One other thing I wanted to add about buying a home is it, if you just, if you're comparing the amount of your mortgage plus home, homeowners insurance compared to the amount of your rent payment, a lot of places it is tough to find a rental house that's on, on the surface is less than a mortgage payment. But remember when you're a homeowner, you have expenses, you're responsible for all the repairs. It costs a lot more to maintain a home when you own it than as the renter where you just tell the landlord, here's what's wrong and they have to send someone to fix it. So don't just compare mortgage payment to rent payment and say, oh, it's cheaper to own a house. Sometimes it's going to be true, but there's a lot more to it than, than just those two numbers. Yeah. Um, well, I think we've covered a lot of good a lot of good advice, a lot of good stuff for, for new cadets. Um, one thing that I, w- I would want to say uh, before we close out here. Um, so we talked about, you know, the practical advice of checking and savings accounts, getting a no annual fee card from one of the military friendly banks, um, starting a Roth IRA if you have the additional income while you're in college. A couple book recommendations, Military Money Manual on my website, militarymoneymanual.com slash book. Um, I will teach you to be rich by Ramit Sethi. The Millionaire Next Door, The Simple Path to Wealth by J.L. Collins, The Little Book of Common Sense Investing um, by Jack Bogle, and then The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel are some of our book recommendations. USAA Career Star Loan, it could go either way. You know, it's a it's a it's definitely a tool, but like any tool, like a hammer, you know, you can use it to build a house and you can also use it, you know, and hit your thumb and really hurt yourself. So just be really careful with, uh, with using... Um, you know, the career start loan or the Navy federal career kickoff loan investment strategies. We talked about, um, just starting with the bogle heads is a great place to start, start building your, your understanding of what assets are and how to build a portfolio. And then when it comes to buying a home at your first duty station, I think we're both pretty opposed to that, but, uh, for the right person, it, it, it could be a smart move. And then the final thing I want to leave you with is, you know, we talk about all this, um, all this money stuff, you know, we're, we're big spreadsheet guys, uh, guys, Jamie more so than me, but, um, you know, or Google, and, Google sheets. So it Google, will allow you to yeah, come in the cool yeah. kids club too. Yeah. But, um, uh, you know, there's this, there's this idea of living outside the spreadsheet, right. And building the life you want and then saving for it. So, you know, I know when I was first starting my financial independence journey, I was a very frugal person. I said no to a lot of events um, with friends. I, you know, there was ski trips that I didn't go on that now that I'm older and have more money than I did then, um, I wish I had said yes to those ski trips. And there's, you know, there's memories that I missed out on because I was so focused on my goal of financial independence. So 
you know, my advice to all the um, all the cadets out there, ROTC Academy is, you know, don't don't miss out on life just because you're trying to save for financial independence. I think if you if you build the habits and you have the goal and you make saving and investing a priority in your life, you know, sometimes it's okay to say, you know what, this month I'm not going to contribute to my Roth IRA. But you can't do that every month. You have to build. <laughs> and that's why I think it's so important to set up automatic automatic systems. So, you know, every month you do contribute to your Roth IRA, but maybe one month you say, okay, I'm going to cut back in this one area. I'm not going to go, you know, out to eat or out to the bars as much this month because next month I'm going on a vacation with some of my friends. And I think if you have those trade-offs between the the things that you want but you always keep contributing to the things that you need, like your Roth IRA, like your Roth TSP, then you can, you can build a life that, that you want to live, you know, full of memories and fun and family and friends and, and great experiences, but you can still achieve financial independence much more quickly than I think you realize. Yeah. So I have three questions and uh, three kind of three key takeaways that I would like uh, that, the listeners to kind of leave the podcast with today. So the first question, am I set up to graduate from either the Academy or from RGC uh, debt-free? What am I doing to ensure that I'm not starting out in a huge hole when I uh, start my adult life officially? Uh, Number two, is it, is opening a credit card with no annual fee? Like we talked about, is that right for me right now? Or what's kind of my strategy? When am I going to do that? If I'm going to do that. So think through that. Number three, Should I take out the cadet loan? Spencer mentioned that. And we've, like we said, episode number nine, I think it was, we did a whole podcast on that, but you, you want to think through it. And those are, that's a big uh, takeaway. The three kind of action items, takeaways I would leave with you today are budget, have a plan for your money, no matter how much you have coming in, have a plan for how you allocate it to what you value in life. Um, and then number two and three kind of go together and that's just read and learn. Like, like you said, Spencer, they have a lot of opportunity, uh, some free time in college, no matter what level you're at. Um, as a freshman at the Air Force Academy, you probably have a couple more months before you have a lot of free time, but reading, learning and educating yourself will set you up for success uh, over the next couple of years. Yeah, those are great takeaways. Thanks, Jamie. Hey guys, it's Spencer again. Before I let you go, I want to let you know about my new book. It's called The Military Money Manual, A Practical Guide to Financial Freedom, and it's available right now at militarymoneymanual.com slash book. This is the book I wish someone had handed me on my first day in the military. In this book, I cover the exact money tactics, investing strategies I use on my path to financial independence before age 40. I break down the math of FI and I explain the exact dollar amounts you need to retire. The book is full of easy to apply financial advice specifically for military service members and their families. I cover tax-free deployments, the thrift savings plan, and many more topics only military personnel can relate to. This book was written specifically for you, whether you're active duty, guard, reserve, a military spouse, enlisted, or officer. Both E's and O's will benefit from the lessons in the military money manual. If you're in the Army, Navy, or Air Force ROTC, or if you're a cadet or midshipman at West Point, Naval Academy, and the Air Force Academy, this is the perfect book to start your military career with. Again, the book is available right now at militarymoneymanual.com slash book, an audiobook, ebook, and my personal favorite, the hardcover book. The hardcover book was printed right here at home in the United States of America, and it will look great on your bookshelf. So check it out. Let me know what you think. And remember, podcast listeners can use promo code podcast to get a special discount. It's called the Military Money Manual, a practical guide to financial freedom. And it's available right now at militarymoneymanual.com slash book. Thanks for listening.